In this video, we're going to do an overview of the Unified Toolpath for Mastercam. Unified is a toolpath that was introduced in 2022, and it's really interesting. As a multi-axis toolpath, it's not really its own toolpath per se. This toolpath is actually a combination of multiple toolpaths that is all found within the same interface. This toolpath can replace the Morph, Parallel, Along Curve, and Project toolpaths, as well as allow for geodesic options. It's a really good idea to be familiar with those toolpaths before starting this one, because a lot of the options that you'll see in the dialog actually match with those other toolpaths, so you'll have a good head start in understanding how this works. This video will only be an overview. I just want to showcase the flexibility of this toolpath. We will have more videos that go over the details of setting all of the different settings inside of this toolpath, so don't get too hung up on the specifics here. I really just want to show you how this can work in general and how flexible and great it is for multi-axis. So we'll start on the view sheet that says without bosses. Here I have a toolpath, number seven, and this is a unified toolpath that's cutting this face of my solid. Now, this isn't necessarily what I would want to do. If I zoom in, you'll see what this cut pattern is. It's basically a parallel type toolpath, and it's collapsing in from the outside in, and it's leaving us with this pattern on the inside, and it's also got this interesting movement going on over here where the transitions come into play. So this isn't the way that I would really want to approach this part, but that's okay, because with Unified, we can make really radical changes to our cut pattern with a couple clicks. So let's take a look at the parameters for Unified. We're going to start with just looking at the cut pattern page. Right now I have this set to Automatic Machining Boundary Parallel. So this is the default that you get when you choose the first button here for Automatic. So what this will do is it's going to look at the boundary of what we're trying to cut and create a parallel cut based on that boundary. So for some geometry, this would be great. But for this particular geometry, it's probably not what I really want. We can set this to other methods too. I can choose to morph this instead, and we're going to get a bit of a different result. All I did there was grab this drop down and choose machining boundary morph instead. I can also use surface boundary options or center options. Let's try machining boundary morph. So after a quick regen, we do see a bit of a difference here. We still have the transitions on this side that look a little bit off, but we can see how the collapse pattern has changed quite a bit. And now if we look on this side, we'll actually see where that collapses down to. Again, this isn't necessarily what I would want to use that for, but I'm just showing you that you can get some different results by choosing these different options. Now, if I really did want to cut this with Unified, I wouldn't want to use those options. Let's take a look at a different way we can set this up. I do know that I want my cut to go kind of along the longest side of that face. So instead of using an automatic option, let's try using one of the surface options instead. I can click this button here to remove all of the pattern options I've set. And then if I use this button, I'll add a surface row. Under the surface type, I can drop down the style and here I can choose between parallel, guide, flow line U, and flow line V. U should be the along direction, so I'm going to choose that one, and we can regen. And very quickly, I have a toolpath that is super close to what I'm actually looking for. At this point, all I really have to do is add some extensions on the end to make sure I have a nice lead in and out of the part. But I was able to get this without having to change any other options inside the parameters. Back in the parameters, it's important to see that all I've done is change this pattern type. I haven't changed any other settings within this toolpath on this page or even any other page. Just by changing the pattern option, we get radically different results. Let's take a look at another example. Let's go to the view sheet that says with bosses. So on this side, we have these little bosses that are sticking up from the part, and I want to cut these with Unified as well. Operation 8 already has one associated to this part. So let's take a look at how we have this currently set up. If I'm looking at this cut, it looks pretty good. I've got a nice clean cut that's going up the entire side and across the top with an even step over. Everything looks pretty clean here. So I would probably be pretty happy with this toolpath, but I can still go in and make adjustments to fine tune this a little bit more. For instance, if I look at this from the side and I zoom in, you can see how this isn't actually straight up and down the boss. It's at a bit of an angle. 
So if we look in the parameters for this toolpath, we'll see that this is currently set to automatic machining boundary parallel. So again, this is taking the boundary of what we're working on and creating parallel cuts based on that. But in something like this, because our boundary is not exactly straight, it's kind of falling off here, we're going to get this kind of wavy result of the part. So we might need to go in and make a change to smooth that out if we wanted it to be straight up and down. So in this case, instead of using automatic, I might choose to use the add curve row. And under here, I'll just choose this as a guide. I'll set a guide with this selector. And I'm just going to choose this top ring here. Say OK. Another thing that's nice is we can use the preview button right here. And that's actually going to generate a new toolpath for us in the background without having to close this dialog. We can see now that this toolpath is a lot more even. It's still got a bit of a spiral to it because it is still set for a spiral cut. So maybe I'll change this to one way instead. Preview again. And now I have nice straight cuts that go across the part with this transition move in between. So the two important things to keep in mind is number one, I can change my cut pattern drastically by just changing the different pattern options inside the cut pattern page. And the second is all the changes that we're making here, we can use our preview button to see what will happen with the toolpath without having to even close our dialog. This means if I keep this on a separate window, I can get my multi-axis programming done quickly and efficiently, and I can stay within my dialog so I can keep an eye on everything I'm changing as I go.